Hi friends! My name is Maylin and welcome back to my channel. I'm a Toronto flutist, music teacher, and performer located in the city of Toronto, Canada. And this is my series where you learn how to play the flute from scratch. So thank you so much for joining me here today. In today's video, we'll be learning a new note. That note will be middle D and we'll also be practicing in G major. So if you're interested, then just keep watching. If you do have any questions throughout the video, please feel free to uh, drop them in the comment section down below and I'll be able to respond to you as soon as possible. Also, if you are having any issues when it comes to your practice sessions and you're not too sure you're getting the most productive practice uh, sessions, um, feel free to check out my free practice guide. Um, it's also located in the description down below and it gives you eight really easy steps to follow to help you to get more productive practice sessions. So thank you so much again and let's just get right into this video. Okay, so as you can expect, we're going to the Trevor Wise Beginners book again uh, for the flute uh, part one. And today we'll be starting on page... 35. Amazing. So we're going to be starting um, with that middle D. So in the book, it does say upper D. You will be learning the higher D in this book. However, I, I, I always mention that there is another D that's higher. Um, so I like to call this middle D. All right, so I'm going to put it up right over here. So middle D essentially is exactly the opposite fingering to C. So if you remember C, it's the first finger in the middle, in your pinky finger, excuse me. So it's going to be every other finger down. So that's going to be your third, fourth, and your thumb on your left. And then also one, two, three on your right hand. So that's going to sound like this. that's going to be middle D. And don't feel bad if you can't quite get this note right away. I find that between C and D, it's kind of our flute break. So if anyone has any experience with playing clarinet, um, there's uh, an octave break that they have. So it, it's kind of where, that's where you hear the primary squeaks from the clarinet when a clarinet is first, or when a, a student is first learning how to play clarinet. It's similar, but not quite the same in flute. Um, so definitely feel free to uh, play around with that note in particular, especially when it comes to your embouchure and your breath support. Going back between C and D is a really, really great exercise. All right, so what I'm going to do is, because we want to practice this new note, we're going to do some long tones with it. So I'm going to put the first one up right here. So this one I'm not going to clap just because it's simple enough. Um, as a reminder, we always want to look at the uh, time signature. It is in 4-4. Four, four. And the, the little sign on top of the D, the first D, that's called a fermata. And that means that you're going to be holding the note longer than is already written or already printed. So at least half of the value of the note. So I need to hold it for at least six beats. All right, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold it as long as I would normally hold it. So if you feel like you can't uh, get as long a note as uh, I can at the beginning, that's totally fine. Uh, what you want to do is, again, when you're warming up, every single time you pick up the instrument, when you're doing those long tones, be really intentional about taking really, really nice, deep, supportive breaths. Again, remember, it's going to be like filling your tummy, opening your back, and then kind of filling up to the top, making sure your shoulders are down. You don't want to have them up like this. And then playing the most beautiful note that you can with a lot of uh, air and richness to it. So I'm going to start and I'm going to play at about one, two, three, four. to any of those long uh, long tones, excuse me, um, always feel free if you don't want to have a really steady beat going um, and you really just want to focus on that sound, feel free to slow it down as much as you want and just focus on every single note that you're playing. Um, take a breath whenever you need to take a breath. Um, and again, really focus on just a few things. So your breath here and your embouchure in particular. And then if there are any finger issues, like any little hiccups when you're moving between notes, then take note of that. 
Um, this is the perfect time to fix those little things before we actually get into playing uh, some of our pieces. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, put up the next one. It's gonna be right here. All right, and this one is also in four four. Uh, I will ca I will clap and count this one. Um, I will not clap and count the repeat. However, I will play it. So one, two, three, four. 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 Okay. So I'm gonna uh, play it at the same tempo as well. One, two, three, four. It just, it's kind of like a jig has a really nice flow to it all right so there are another three lists in the book so I'm just going to put one more up here for you right here this is going to be the one in three four the other two are still in four four and um, this one I'm not going to clap and count just because again it is very straightforward it's a half note plus a quarter note and then it changes at the very end the last two measures so again when we count one, two, three, one, two, three, it's gonna be like a nice wheel. So one, two, three, one, two, three. And I'm also gonna take it out that same tempo that I just counted. And then don't forget that there are slurs as well. So slurring means that you don't articulate between the notes, you're using your breath and you're just continuing that breath as you change notes. So one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> So that one, of course, you can again slow down, but I like it at that nice tempo. It has a nice flow to it. All right, so now I'm flipping the page to page 36, and we'll be looking at the scale exercise in G major. So this is a little bit different than the other uh, scale exercises that we've looked at so far. I'm gonna put it up right here. So uh, what we're going to do as always, we're gonna take a look first at the left side at the beginning. So we're in four, four again, four quarter notes per measure. And then you can see the key signature there, we have that F sharp. So again, that that is a that serves as a reminder that all the Fs that you play has to be sharp. All right. So this one will clap and count as per usual, and then I can play it for you. Don't forget to write in any of the notes if you feel like you need to write them. So I'm gonna do it at one, two, three, and four, and one, and two, and three, four, one. So now I'll play it for you so you can get it in your ear. Play at the same tempo. One and two and three and four. <laughs> definitely add uh, once you have learned it definitely try it at a little bit of a faster speed so for example maybe one two three four so that's gonna really help with um, uh, your finger technique and your finger coordination so once you learn it what you can do again is take out your metronome make sure that you start it out again at a lower speed maybe uh, 40 or 50 beats per minute 
um, and then slowly speed it up until you get to exactly where you want it to be. So maybe at 80 or 90, depending on how uh, you want to work on your technique. All right, so now we're going to be on to the last uh, piece for today, and it's another duet, which is going to be really awesome. This is going to be a little bit longer because there are a lot of repeats. Um, so actually, when I play it, I'm not going to play any of the repeats here, um, but if you do want to record yourself and, and play for yourself uh, as a duet, then you can definitely do those repeats, of, of course. All right, so I'm going to put it up right here. So this is uh, called Bronsel, and just so you know, I'm going to be, uh, I had to research what this was, and I was like, oh, I think that this is a kind of dance. So um, I, on Wikipedia, it says, uh, a bronsel is a popular French dance from the early 16th century, normally danced by couples in a line or a circle. So this is a type of French dance from, again, the 1700s, um, which are still dance today, which is really cool. Okay, so let's take a look here. Um, of course, we're in G major. Uh, we are playing at a moderato. Again, that means a moderate speed. Um, and, he, and for the time signature, rather than seeing 4-4, four, four, he's written C, but it's exactly the same. C means common time, which is 4-4, four, four, which is four quarters per measure. All right, and then of course we do see the F sharp there that indicates that uh, all the sharps should be F. I mean, all the F should be sharp. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I'm going to clap through the entire thing once um, Just for you to notice though the repeats. So there's well, the first repeat here is from the very beginning uh, Up to the second line the second bar so you would repeat that once and then you have the middle section that you don't repeat But then you have another repeat sign at the end of the third line so the, the last two bars there and the very end and then you would rallentando the second time the last time and again, that means to slow down gradually. Okay, so I'm just gonna clap uh, and count the first part here. Again, I'm not going to be doing the repeats. So I'm gonna take it at one, two, three, four. 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 One, two. One, two, three, four. One and two and three. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three. Four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three. Four. One, two, three, 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 four. All right, so that was quite long. Um, what I would do is I, whenever I find that there's a long repetitive piece, I like to find patterns. So as I was reading through this, I actually noticed a really big pattern that this piece is in A, B, A form. So tertiary form. So essentially what that means is we have an A section. So that A section I would say would be the, the all in between the first repeat sign. We have our B section, which is the contrasting section, which is right in the middle between the two um, repeats in the middle. So I'm looking sorry, at the second line and the third line where there's no repeats. And then we have our A section again. So it's exactly the same as the beginning, um, except with a different, you know, even the end is the same. Yeah. So again, it's exactly the same as the very beginning. So you can see from the beginning of the repeat, all the notes. Uh, let me just make sure. So almost exactly the same yeah there's a little bit of a change um, in the fourth bar to the end but besides that it's it pretty much exactly the same yeah so that's really exciting so once you learn the first part uh, the first a then the second time that that material comes around you'll be able to notice it and say oh I've already played this before so it's not so difficult it makes it a little bit easier to learn the piece okay so I'm now going to play through it, and again, I'm not going to play it with the repeat, just so it'll get a little bit too long. Alright, so I'm going to take it again at that same tempo. Uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs>
yeah, so it's really, really nice, really fun piece. And now we're going to learn the second part. Okay, so as per usual, I'll count and clap again at the same tempo. Um, and then in this one, make sure that you notice that, again, the dynamic story will actually go between both of the parts. So wherever you see a forte, they're going to be played on both parts. So both parts will be playing forte. And then again, that means uh, loud. And then when you see piano, it's kind of like an echo. And that means to play softly, again, applies to both parts. Uh, and just as I'm looking ahead, um, just be aware that we have a lot of those dotted quarters and eighths and some extra eighth notes in there. All right, so I'm gonna take it again at the same tempo. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, 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 three, four. One, and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, and two, and three, four. One, two, and three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right. So now I'm going to play it for you. Same tempo, no repeats. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So that's going to be it for today. Thank you again for joining me here. As always, again, if you have any questions about any of the things that I went over today, feel free to drop them in the comment section down below. And of course, if you are having any issues with practicing, feel free to check out my free practice guide located in the description also down below. And in next week's video, we'll be learning a new concept and that's going to be all about canons. So I can't wait to uh, join you there for next week. But as always, happy fitting!